Hi, my name is Carrie Adams and I live in Rapid City. I'm the Dean of Students at an elementary school in Rapid City Area Schools. The book I'm going to be talking about is Hacking School Discipline. The authors are Nathan Maynard and Brad Weinstein. Um, some thoughts about my book. As the Dean of Students in an elementary school, I spend a large portion of my time working with students with negative behaviors. When I saw the list of books for this project, the title of this book was instantly intriguing to me. And uh, reading this book, I found quick ideas that I could easily implement. In fact, I really appreciated that the book had specific sections in each chapter that were titled, What You Can Do Tomorrow. Um, there were several ways that I connected with the text. Uh, from the moment I picked up the book, immediately I connected with the text. Um, hack one was called Let's Talk. The first quote by Josh McDowell says, rules without relationships inspire rebellion. I read, read, and reread this quote because I found it so powerful. We need to listen to students to understand what they're trying to tell us through their behavior. And punitive consequences don't give us the opportunity to find out what happened in the first place. Rather, a set of open-ended questions would help us understand more about their behavior. Hack two is called Circled Up. And Circle Up, I was really interested to see that because we have a lot of teachers doing Circle Up in our school. And so I enjoyed reading more about it and reading all the things our teachers are doing so well in our school. Teachers use this strategy uh, at our school to address concerns or issues within the classroom, playground, or other areas of the school. Students are provided an opportunity uh, using a talking stick like they mentioned in the book to share how issues make them feel and then the class has an opportunity to discuss how to repair the harm. Teachers and students have shared how successful and how beneficial they find the circle up strategy. Hack three is repair the harm. Uh, when students are used to punishments and consequences, repairing the harm can be difficult for students to navigate. Taking ownership and responsibility for their own behaviors is quite difficult. In fact, yesterday I was working with a student who had recently, um, or who had, who repeatedly, sorry, asked me for a consequence when I was working with him to repair harm by um, what his act actions had caused. And he, I was asking him simply to write a letter of apology and he would have preferred I assess over writing this brief letter. And I truly believe it was simply because writing the letter meant that he had to accept ownership for his poor choice and the negative behavior. Um, so I, the new takeaways that extended my thinking in hack four, it's called throw out the uh, throw out the rules. And when I read the title, I was immediately drawn to wondering what in the world they might be talking about throwing out the rules. However, I quickly understood it makes so much sense to create clear expectations rather than a long list of rules. We can use a smaller number of broad expectations that will cover more than a list of specific rules that students can still easily find loopholes through. <clears throat> Then also I thought about rather than constantly telling students what we don't want them to do, we should work to help students realize how to make appropriate choices that will create positive and lifelong behavioral changes. In doing so, we can help them um, retain positive relationships and high expectations with, or we can retain, excuse me, those positive relationships and high expectations with students. <clears throat> Uh, the next question was, what might be some challenges or obstacles you think of when referencing the book? Uh, this was really quite an easy one for me to come up with an answer to. And the biggest obstacle I see with implementing more restorative practices is pushback from teachers. Um, when implementing more restorative practices, the hugest thing I hear from teachers 
is that they don't understand the lack of consequences or punishment. Um, I've had teachers ask me what else kind of punishment are they going to get? It's really a huge mind shift for um, staff and teachers all the same. On page 156, it says, it will be key to be honest with your staff that the benefits of an MTSS might be slow to come, but will be better in the long run. So really, we all have to stay the course and work together um, to see those long run benefits. In reflection, um, the text is going to help me be a better educational leader for a couple different reasons. One, uh, prior to this school year starting, um, our leadership team stated they really wanted to see a lot more restorative practices utilized versus ISS or OSS as consequences. We had a lot of older students last year receiving a lot of ISS and OSS based on our behavior matrix and they would prefer this year we try to stay away from that when we could possibly do so. So as a Dean of Students, I've been use, utilizing more restorative practices wherever I can. And when I, when I can spend time talking and listening to the students, I'm often able to listen for what their behavior is trying to tell us. And I'm able to spend time working with those students, building relationships. Uh, reflecting on this reading really reminds me to work with those students and build relationships and listen to understand their behaviors. <clears throat> Along with that, working with students to repair harm is so important. Students need that chance to comprehend the impact of their behavior. Providing the guidance to repair that damage is crucial. I spoke earlier of a student I worked with yesterday and I referred to this book while working with him multiple times. This student was with me all day and it took him over half the day just to write that letter of apology. I calmly repeated my expectations many times and he eventually wrote the letter. Today I told her, yesterday I told him that today my expectation would be that he come to my office, pick up the letter, take it to his teacher and apologize to his teacher. He did it on his own time. Mid afternoon today he came to get the letter. Taking responsibility for his actions is a big deal because he rarely does so. I share this story to say, this book will sit on my desk for a long time. I still have a lot to learn, but I am committed to getting better and helping others do the same. Thank you.